that the population of Berlin is a 3 million and 400,000. It means this is the largest city on our tour. And the area of the city of Berlin is approximately seven times the area of Paris in France. So Berlin is also the largest capital in Europe in terms of area. It is in fact a very green city, very, very green and a pleasant capital city here in Europe, Berlin. In fact, in 1987, the city celebrated its 750th birthday anniversary. For Europe, that's a young, we can say, a young city, Berlin. Now for the Berlin's hidden past, the optional, we are doing today, the departure is at 5.15, quarter past five. We will have a local guide, a gentleman whose name is Burkhardt. Burkhardt will be our guide only for this tour today. You see it here down on the street? And right hand, you have iron bars. They tell you they had been put here instead of the former wall. Okay? And now you see that this goes over into remnants of the Berlin Wall. Do you see this? And look how times change. Nowadays we have a fence protecting the wall against you. We will get off here. You will get a chance to take photos of all of this. But first let me drive along so that you can see. By the way, we are on the western side of the wall. When you see graffiti on the wall, this might be original graffiti. But never ever, this is only since the wall came down that people came here, woodpeckers as we call them, and trying to get souvenirs from those remnants of the wall, you see. Now it goes over to those bars again, and then again to a bit of the original one. And now comes up a real this old wall was the wall of a cemetery, which was and still is behind there. Do you see this? They emptied this area in the death strip where tombs had been, brought them away. And look here, this is now the memorial itself. You see the wall here? Two iron walls being put on this and that side. And now Marco is going to drive right hand and we will... Okay. This wall here is the first wall which normally looked exactly like the second wall. They made it here look a bit different after the wall came down to give you a chance to look through into the so-called security strip or death strip. You are standing, we are all in former East. The two walls were a construction and an idea of the Easterns, okay? When you look through, you see the security strip, then you see the second wall. Just here beside us, you see one of those watchtowers that they had. They had even dogs on chains running up and down, being trained to kill. Now, I want, this is the literal wall that you see here. I want you now to understand. So Berlin was located in the Soviet part of Germany. And now listen to what they decided as well, not only to cut the German cake into four pieces, they decided to cut the Berlin cake into four pieces alike. Why? This was very symbolic. Everyone wanted to have a part of the country and a part of the former capital of the German Reich. This Soviet part of the cake became East Germany, founded as country. And on the other side was founded the Federal Republic of Germany. The combination of those three Western parts became the Federal Republic of Germany. Two German countries. And what did they do? They closed down entirely the German-German border, which you know as the Iron Curtain. That's the famous Iron Curtain. It continued down here, but cutting Germany into two pieces, okay? Now, border crossing was not possible anymore, but still East Germans living here could get into the three Western sectors of the city of Berlin. From there, take a plane and leave. 
And therefore, in addition to closing down entirely the German-German border, East German officials surrounded entirely the three western sectors of the city of Berlin by this wall. Very strange. Very often people think Berlin was located on the German-German border and only cut into two. No, that's wrong. And that's very important that you get the difference. It was literally an island in East Germany, completely surrounded. Over there, I lived over there, and I was completely surrounded by this dual construction of the wall. Why did they make it a dual construction? Because you can't escape both. If you escape one, then they shoot you before you go to the next one. That's exactly the point. This is easier to control. If you, make, if you have two walls, you even don't need barbed wire. It is sufficient to have 18,000 soldiers, and that's what we had, 18,000 soldiers who did the controlling between those two walls. They shot everything, rabbits and people. Those 18,000 soldiers were not Soviet soldiers. That's what people very often think. Those were East German soldiers. Now, imagine, and that's very, very important that you do understand this. This wall was a construction where Germans tried to escape from Germany to Germany, and when they did so, they were killed by Germans. They killed their own people. This had a length of 90 miles. 90 miles. And completely surrounded the other side. One to 89. Okay, take a photo of this. Yeah. Okay. I, even when the wall was up, I was walking along here, which I could do, and I thought I would be safe. I was not. I was safe not earlier than here. You know why they made it? This was Eastern territory of it. And you know why? If this would be West, I could start taking the wall down, being here and being safe. They had, literally, that's a surprise for many people, they had doors in the wall from time to time. Not very old, but they had been doors that they could open, get through, and in case he was someone who wanted to take down the wall, they could shoot here. The rule to be back before midnight. I was not allowed to stay overnight. And I literally, I had to run. And you know, I arrived five minutes early, five minutes too late at the border crossing. And you know what they did? They put me to jail. At the age of 17, I was in prison only for two days. But two days can be very long when you don't know how long they will keep you. I took it as adventure at the age of 17, you see. The only thing I was scared about was that my parents would kill me that day. <laughs> and they literally, they were in, in, in horror because in case stupid young Burkhard would have tried during my stay over in East to help an East German to escape, it would have been prison for the rest of my life. Yeah, that's exactly the problem that they had. You see how small those, how tiny you could say those planes had been. And that's why they had to start and to learn every minute, you know. If you want to, to support two million people with little matchbox airplanes like this, you, you understand that was a true, uh, it was a m very, very dangerous military operation. That's what it was, okay? And it's, uh, it became a myth more or less, finally, but you should never forget it was a dangerous military operation. 79 pilots lost their lives, and that's the reason why the Berliners are until today so grateful. Look left hand side, this is a ruin. And a ruin of a former train station, dead end train station. Nothing is left, only the entrance of the entrance building to this huge uh, uh, train station, which is or was on the left-hand side. And that was built at the midst of the 19th century, non mid midst at the end of the 19th century. And now imagine, all this is gone due to the bombing. And that's something that you should always take in account, being in the city of Berlin, that six. 60%, 60, 
not 16, no, 60% of the city were gone after the end of Second World War due to the bomb. talk about something different. Do you see down on the street, the double row of coupled stones here? Do you see this? This is where the former wall was. We drive through the wall now. Didn't hurt, huh? Okay. Does it feel different? We are now in the East. No, it does not feel different. But I can tell you, we are even in the former death because on our way to the Holocaust Memorial, I will now drive through or above the former bunker of Adolf Hitler and across the area where the Soviet soldiers found the ashes of Eva Braun and Adolf Hitler. Imagine, and this is almost besides the Holocaust Memorial of today. Okay, we now still are driving along the former building. Imagine, the building is completely gone, okay? And now, Marco will drive through it without killing this person here, please. And imagine, we are sort of driving into the new chancellery of Adolf Hitler at the very moment. You have to imagine this building very long along that street, but quite narrow which means we are sort of getting out of the building here already, okay? And now you have to imagine something which does not exist as well, because we have now the buildings here, but you have to imagine a sort of a park area. And in the underground of that park, there was the bunker system where, at the exit, the Soviet soldiers found the ashes of Eva Braun and Adolf Hitler. And now I'm talking about this only because we want to make it a real stop at the Holocaust Memorial, which is just besides, or to put it very precise here, yeah, above the bunker of Goebbels, which was besides Hitler's bunker, you see. So look here, on the, we derive left hand, Marco, and uh, here, this is the Holocaust Memorial, you see. And I, I'm going to make it a real stop there. And my experience is the following. No, no, no need even to take photos from here because I'm going to give you time to walk into this memorial, okay? You have 2,711 of those concrete blocks here, or steely. There is no specific symbolism or meaning behind the number, okay? It is just filling up the area given to the architect. It's an American architect, Peter Eisenman, who designed this memorial. It's the memorial commemorating more than six million Jews being murdered during the time of the Nazis in Europe. Um, it looks a little bit like a labyrinth or like a cemetery. It's neither labyrinth nor cemetery. It is just the memorial. And in the underground, we have a documentary center, which gives, as far as we know, all the names, okay? But you should have, and I literally ask you to walk into this. German resistance. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, you see the 20th of July just passed by, so that's why you have quite fresh flowers here at the very moment. And uh, I will first translate to you what is written down here. Here died for Germany on the 20th of July 1944 and then we have those five names, and in the midst of those five names, we have Count Schenk of Stauffenberg. Um, I would like, first, I would like to tell you the story, which, by the way, had been made five times a movie, three times from the German side, two times from the American side, from the Hollywood side. First was with Brett Davis, 
an actor that you might remember because he was playing Midnight Express. And the recent one was with Tom Cruise. We're going to talk about Tom Cruise if you want to a bit later. <laughs> because I did a two days tour with him and Katie. So I have a certain right to talk about what I experienced there. But we are here talking about Count Schenk of Stauffenberg and that story first. To report to Hitler. And um, he did this with a briefcase in his hand and in this briefcase there was the ball. He put his briefcase under the table that they all were standing around mm -hmm. and uh, then he did his report and later he left. And on arriving at Tempelhof Airport, by the way, he was arrested, brought here to and killed to the others. Um, so what in fact happened, the very moment that the bomb exploded, Hitler was a few meters over here discussing with someone else and the bomb killed two others. That's what happened. This is the television tower, TV tower, of the former eastern side of the city. They wanted to make visible the technical progress of the GDR. And that's why they put a huge... was uh, opened uh, almost exactly five uh, years ago, ready for the uh, Football World Cup that took place in uh, Germany five years ago. We had uh, six matches taking place at the Berlin uh, Olympic Stadium, including the final. We were hoping to be in the final again, become again the next world champions. We missed it, we lost against uh, Italy because we had such lousy referees. In front of the uh, Chelsea tonight, a beautiful piece of modern art there's a beautiful brown rusty thing over there to the right hand side. The name of the sculpture is uh, Berlin. You probably guessed uh, anyway. And it's supposed to show the dynamic development of uh, our city. Especially in this uh, part of Berlin again, you can see how fast Berlin has changed in the past uh, few years. And that's why we already call it the New Berlin. Our Chancellor meets some uh, ministers in that big middle part of the uh, Chancery and uh, then she can look over to the German uh, Parliament building that you will see in a minute when we turn around here to the left hand side. So that's the Reichstag uh, building. Normally there's a mile long queue outside and all these people want to go up into that glass dome which is a panorama viewing platform. But um, ever since November this has been closed uh, more or less to the public because of Islamic uh, terrorist warning. 
No? Oh, yes, yes. The flag is uh, on top. That means our president is in town. Now, when I asked you what is the name of the German president, you would probably not know, because the German president is normally not very well known abroad, because he has no political... Then right in front of us, the victory column. It was erected in memory of the last wars that Germany won, which was as recent as 1864, 1866, and 1870, 71. The column is 210 feet high, and right on top of it, the heaviest angel in our city, weighing 78,000 pounds, nobody can beat her. The 285 exhaust. It's one of Berlin's four big cultural centers, in the wing, we have just passed, we have all the historical rooms, including the living rooms of Redick the Great, with his famous painting collection. Then in the yard of the palace here to right inside, you can see one of the masterpieces of the German Baroque, one of the most beautiful equestrians. Now, our hotel, Hotel Concord, is uh, located in former west, so it's in the west end of the city. A few steps away from the most famous street in West Berlin, the Kudam. The actual name of that street is a much longer name, it's Kurfürstendam. But it's abbreviated as a Kudam, easier, Kudam. That's where all the major department stores of Berlin can be found, the famous uh, uh, shopping center, Europa Center. famous uh, KDW as well. KDW is the short for Kaufhaus des Westen, means a shopping house of the West. The KDW is the largest uh, department store in Germany, presumably of Europe, and it's the place where you can find the biggest uh, food department store of the world, even larger than Harrods in uh, London. On the fifth I think it's the fifth floor, on anyway, the top, it's the top floor of the KDV, 